Hey, what's up? It's Tony. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope uh, if you're checking them out, you find them helpful. If this is your first time watching one of the videos, I hope you find this one helpful too. I wanted to do this video because it's important. I keep on saying that in all the videos because they're super important, but it's important. If you are getting your first catheter and have gotten your first catheter, or you're getting your catheter replaced, I want to suggest you get home as fast as freaking humanly possible. This is no time for dilly-dallying. This is no time for chatting. This is no time for anything. I mean, get your information from your doctor, from, your, from the nurse, do all of that stuff, grab your supplies, and get the beep out of there. And the reason for this is simply because the numbing cream is going to start to wear off. And at that point, it's no joke at all. It is seriously no joke because that's when the pain starts to kick in. Now, ideally, if possible, I would suggest you have somebody come and pick you up. That way you can go directly from the urologist's office home with no stops along the way. Again, time is of the essence here. Actually, now that I think of it, maybe I could have asked the doctor or the nurse to give me some more numbing cream to ensure that the pain would not start. Anyhow, ideally, have somebody pick you up and take you home. You do feel a little, I felt a little off, that's for sure. You know, your body's kind of healing or kind of freaking out. So you kind of feel a little bit off um, physically and also too mentally, it's a lot to digest. So get somebody to take you home. Whatever you do, if you happen to live in a city with a subway system, do not, I repeat, do not take the subway. I stupidly took the subway the first time I had a catheter put in, which was in the ER. And I cannot tell you the amount of pain that I was in. I was fine kind of taking little tiny steps to get to the subway, walking like kind of like this, because the numbing cream was still in effect. However, by the time the train came and I got on the train, the numbing cream had started to come to wear off. I felt every single bump, every single lump, every single shake of that train for the six subway stations that I had to take. It was unbelievable, the pain. It's just, it's too bumpy and it's unpleasant and it's painful and no, out of the way, out of the question. And I actually still, actually, once I got off at my stop, I couldn't walk properly anymore because of the pain that I took a cab home two blocks because it was impossible to walk any further. I literally hailed a cab and said, take me to where I live and the guy was like, um, you live literally around the corner. I'm like, shut up, I can't walk, stop asking questions, just get me home. I would also too suggest that if you are a walker, you know, you like to walk, uh, this is not the time to walk, absolutely out of the question. Not the time to walk at all. Initially, for me, I found for the first few days, the least amount of walking that I did the better it was because I had to adjust to this new lifestyle of having the catheter in, which required a couple of days to get used to it, to figuring out which was the best way to stand, which was the best way to walk or lay down or go to the bathroom until I got not pain free, but definitely more comfortable, if I could use that word loosely, with having a catheter on, in, I should say, in. So uh, another thing, don't walk. Do not walk home, even if it's just a few blocks. Also, <laughs> no biking, no motorcycle, no razor scooter, no horseback, <laughs> no boats. Yeah, do not use any of those modes of transportation to get home. I don't care how fast it is, but it's too bumpy. Yeah, so... Well, if you had a boat and that got you home a lot faster and you lived on a lake, maybe that would be, I, you get the message, get home quick. I also too would advise that you 
have somebody pick up your medication for you and not attempt to do any second stops, any, uh, you know, listen, just it's from point A to point B. So unless your pharmacist is directly on the way home, you could stop up and get it, but I would recommend just get your ass home first and have somebody pick it up or even better, right? Have it delivered. So no side, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? No side, no side tracking. That's it. No side tracking. That's it. Don't pick up food. Don't pick up anything. Just get your ass home. When you do finally make it home, I would suggest that you don't expect to get back to your regular routine. I would suggest immediately take a nap, take a load off, put your feet up, relax. And I'm going to have a video about sitting down and how uncomfortable that is and how to make it much more comfortable. But your body's going through a lot right now. And I definitely would not go back to work or to your office. I mean, because you're not going to be able to sit in an upright chair. I certainly didn't. I didn't sit in at my desk probably for three weeks. Impossible, to s just impossible. So your body's getting used to having a foreign object in it and I felt feverish, not in a, in a sickly way, but it was almost like my body was trying to go to that one area and feel better. So I felt woozy and I felt off. So really when you get home, take a nap, take it easy. If you can have somebody maybe come by and bring you something to eat, bring your medication if that's the case. Kind of really take it easy and digest all of the stuff that's happening and what's happening to your body and what and the journey that you're going on. So you need to be kind to yourself, take a nap, you know, and chill out and wake up and start to navigate everything else that goes along with having this catheter.